All right, good afternoon. It's your boy, Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Mob Story Season 2. I just rolled up a little bit of uh, Gandalf the White Wizard. Mink is delicious. Let's get down to business, gentlemen. Wipe your feet on the rug. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. Of course, today's video is sponsored by Justice Tech Pros. Subscribe to Justice Tech Pros on YouTube. Salute to the whole team over there, Dominic and everybody. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Let's get down to business. Now, this is a story that we've been following from the beginning. Appeal court rules in Frankie Loke's favor. Bull's statement is evidence in Gambino Consiglieri's ongoing struggle to get out of prison. Of course, by Ed Scarpo. Salute. ColstraNostraNews.com. What's poppin'? Frank Frankie Loke Lacasio, the former Gambino Consiglieri serving life following a 1992 murder racketeering conviction, won a small victory last week when a federal appeals court in Manhattan ordered that a signed declaration from Salvatore Sammy the Bull Gravano a disgraciad, be admitted as new evidence. Lacasio included the declaration in a filing in Brooklyn Federal Court that is a part of his ongoing effort to overturn his conviction for the 1990 slaying of Gambino wise guy Louis De Bono, a successful contractor who failed to show up when summoned. For this infraction, De Bono was shot to death in a World Trade Center parking garage in October of 1990. Gravano's signed statement bolsters one of Lacasio's key ongoing claims. For years, Lacasio has argued that he tried to talk John Gotti out of killing De Bono and had attempted to broker a peace deal by which De Bono would pay Gotti 50000 for his absenteeism. Gravano notes that Lacasio did indeed try to save De Bono, and for his efforts, Lacasio earned Gotti's wrath. Gotti demoted Lacasio as a direct response to his attempts to broker that peace deal, Gravano claims. Gravano's signed statement details how Sammy the Bull had neglected to tell prosecutors that Lacasio was not involved in the De Bono murder during his testimony at Gotti and Lacasio's 1992 trial. He never mentioned that factoid because no one, not the defense lawyers, not prosecutors, had even asked that question while he was on the stand. Quote, Frank Lacasio had no role in the planning of, nor did he participate in any way in the murder or conspiracy to murder Louis De Bono. The bull statement reads, Gotti wanted De Bono dead for failing to show up at meetings, but Lacasio apparently did believe De Bono had committed a death penalty offense. Lacasio supposedly can even be heard in a recorded conversation from 1989 attempting to calm Gotti down and save De Bono's life by telling Gotti that De Bono would compensate him to the tune of 50000 according to the filing. Shortly after this conversation, Gotti told me he strongly resented Lacasio's suggestion that he take the money and forget about killing De Bono. Gravano's statement reads, Lacasio's failed attempt to spare De Bono cost him his number two spot in the Gambino crime family. Gravano said he was bumped up to underboss and Lacasio was demoted to acting consigliere. Gravano confessed to involvement in 19 murders as part of his deal with the feds. He would drop out of witness protection and wind up serving a 15-year bid for dealing ecstasy. He was released in 2017. Gotti died in 2003 in a Missouri prison. Gravano's statement in August of 2018 says, quote, He was prepared to testify that while Gotti gave Gravano the order to kill De Bono, Lacasio had nothing to do with it. I signed that hit to a number of individuals that did not include Lacasio, Gravano said in his statement. In the one-page document, Gravano, who flipped in November of 1991, wrote that although Lacasio had knowledge of Gotti's intention to order the murder, as evidenced by a recorded conversation dated December 12, 1989, wrote Gravano, clearly Gotti, as the boss of the family, had the sole authority to make the decision and was not seeking Lacasio's approval of his decision, unquote. It was then and remains my belief that, Lacasio was trying to appease Gotti with the idea that De Bono would bring Gotti money and that the situation would be resolved, wrote Gravano. The Bull also noted that the Dapper Don told him in a subsequent conversation that he resented Lacasio's suggestion. Gravano also named who he assigned to the De Bono hit team, Gambino Capo and major drug trafficker Pasquale Patsy Conte and the soldiers Anthony Sims, Tony Vinciulo and Francesco Paul Graziano. 
The team, however, was not able to kill De Bono and as a result was removed from the assignment. On the eve of their second trial in 1994, the first ended in a hung jury, the trio, named above, were charged with being part of the same alleged conspiracy as Lacasio, cop guilty pleas to murder conspiracy charges in return for prison terms between 7 and 10 years. After several months, a new team was instructed to kill De Bono and eventually, Gravano wrote, De Bono was murdered. I did not participate in assigning this new group to commit the murder and, as of the time of my testimony, was unaware of the identity of the participants. To my knowledge, wrote Gravano, Frank Lacasio had no interaction with any of the individuals who actually killed De Bono. Gambino soldier Charles Carnegie was convicted in 2009 of being part of a three-man hit team that killed De Bono. Kevin McMahon dodged a life sentence for two gangland murders by testifying against Carnegie a disgrace. John Gotti used to say that McMahon brought good luck to him, so he always wanted him nearby whenever he played cards. Mug Mahone participated in the 1990 De Bono slaying in the World Trade Center garage and talked about it in detail during Carnegie's trial. Defense lawyer Stuart Grossman said Mug Mahone cried like a baby after testifying against Carnegie whom he once called uncle. Sammy the Bull also indicated that he told the government before the trial that Frankie Loke had nothing to do with the rub out. The Brooklyn U.S. Attorney's Office, however, wasn't convinced and decided to prosecute him for the murder using the tape-recorded talk in which Gotti has heard telling Lacasio why De Bono was going to be killed as its key evidence. It's safe to say that love, it's safe to say that the love John Gotti expresses for Frankie Lowe didn't last long after the arrest in December 1990. In fact, John Gotti reportedly put a hit out on his former consigliere in the wake of Gravano's underboss memoir, which was published in 1997. In the memoir, Gravano writes about how Gotti once disrespected Frankie Loke, which resulted in Frankie and Sammy together making a blood pact to kill John if the three of them ever got out of prison. In Underboss, Gravano claims that Lacasio wanted to kill Gotti. Lacasio was none too pleased about being placed in solitary confinement as a, rel as a result of Gotti's alleged threat. He insisted he was not in danger, and he filed a lawsuit in an attempt to spring himself from solitary. As for the inflammatory passage in Underboss, Gravano describes an incident in which Lacasio in prison with Gotti and Gravano in 1991 gave Sammy a stolen orange before offering one to Gotti. Gali became furious and loudly belittled Lacasio in front of the other inmates. Later, Gravano said a humiliated Lacasio tearfully vowed to murder Gotti, stating, The minute I get out, I'm killing this fuck. Gravano says that he and Lacasio then made a pact to kill Gotti if they ever got out of jail. Frankie said, Sammy, two things. I'll bring him to the party myself. There would be a victory party as a ruse to lure him, supposedly, and I get to be the shooter. Mink. According to law enforcement sources and court papers, an infuriated Gotti, who was serving a life sentence in Marion, reached out to the Aryan Brotherhood prison gang to kill Lacasio. Two members of the white supremacist group had been used in 1994 by one of Gotti's associates, in a murder-for-hire contract. Federal prison officials in Marion allegedly caught Gotti complaining about the Lacasio passage on video cameras. Without identifying Gotti, prison officials said in court papers a possible contract has been put out on Lacasio's life by his former mafia associates. Three law enforcement sources confirmed Gotti put out the contract. The alleged plot against Lacasio first surfaced in court papers when he filed suit against prison officials to be let out of solitary at the U.S. Medical Center for Federal Prisoners in Springfield. In court testimony, August 19, James Baker, special investigative agent for the U.S. Bureau of Prisons, confirmed, I was informed there was a million-dollar wet contract out on Lacasio. In prison terms, Baker said a wet contract means anybody can pick it up. If a nut over in a cell block somewhere was to do the contract, he would get awarded the money. A wet contract is just open for anyone. Some sources, however, say Gotti specifically reached out to the Aryan Brotherhood. Baker testified that he contacted an FBI agent in New York on August 7 to ascertain if the contract, this contract that they had talked about, was valid. In fact, he said yes, in fact it was. 
On August 20th, Missouri federal judge Russell Clark ordered Locasio be kept in isolation, stating the evidence establishes that Locasio, at 65 years old, may well spend the rest of his life in administrative segregation because of the potential contract on his life. Gotti attorney Bruce Cutler said in 1998 that the death plot was a hoax aimed at keeping Gotti behind bars in Marion while damaging attempts to free his son, John A. Gotti Jr., who was then on bail pending racketeering charges. Salute to Ed Scarpo, great story, great, great story. Good news for Frankie Loke. Uh, we've been following this from the beginning. Let's get Frankie out. Huh? Free Frankie, that's what I'm talking about. Salute to the old team, Mob Story Season 2, Big Rich, you know how we do. Salute.